Hi, I'm Jack from Achievers. We conduct amazing H2 math tuition and crash courses that I know my students enjoy attending. When it comes to higher level math, and in our case, A level H2 math, to complete an exam paper is more of like competing in an F1 race. It is no longer going to be straight tracks, but there will be sharp turns and corners along the way. So adopting a strategy of having a single pace is definitely not going to work well. For example, the time allocated for a H2 math exam is 3 hours and the marks is 100. So some students tend to use these 3 hours and divide it by 100 and attempt to allocate an average of 1 minute and 48 seconds for every mark that is in their exam. This is like trying to use the same speed to drive through the straight portions of the track as the sharp corners. And you know what? You will crash. What we need to do is to vary our pace during an exam, speeding up along the straight tracks and slowing down to tackle the sharp corners. So the first thing to do is to learn when to go faster and when to go slower. But before this, we must note that there is one very important prerequisite. And that is to first get ourselves very, very well versed with the syllabus and we should have been practicing diligently. So if you are ready, then let's start. Now the straight track type of questions will be the kind of questions that students usually refer to them as the direct questions and the sharp corners will be the indirect questions. And for the more direct questions, they are usually questions with more instructional components while the indirect questions, they will usually have less instructional components. Here are two questions both requiring exactly the same set of solution and carrying the same amount of marks. But the one that is on the left is a question with less instructional components as compared to the one that is on the right. This is intentional and its aim is to groom us into mature and independent thinkers. So when facing the question on the left, you will need to feel comfortable enough to slow down in the exam because the nature of it requires additional time to be allocated for thinking and strategizing. And please don't misunderstand me. Slowing down does not mean that you are going to be doing the question slowly. It just simply implies that you shouldn't be doing it as fast. By giving yourself time to think for such questions, the chances of you getting these questions correct is going to increase. But if you expect yourself to be able to speed through it, then you will probably end up panicking and then you will have all these mental blocks. And if you have been picking up the pace when attempting the more direct questions, then you would have freed up more time to think when it comes to such indirect questions. So overall, you will not compromise the total time you have for the paper. And in fact, what you have done is to optimize that time. But what we need to realize is that it is not going to be practical to constantly perform these micro calculations during the exam itself. So my suggestion is to go as fast as you can for questions you find manageable and slowing down when you realize that you're not able to get an immediate clear picture of the strategy of how you can be solving the problem. This may sound like a no-brainer, right? But we are more naturally going to relax and slow down when we see questions that are easy. So we need to remind ourselves that if we do not quicken up, then we will not have the luxury to slow down to think when we are facing those questions that are more indirect later. And finally, I want to remind you again that to execute this varied pacing in the exam, we will first need to have a very competent working knowledge of the syllabus. So let's first make that our priority. And once that is being achieved, then we can proceed to learn how to tweak the pace during the exam as this will help us to score the highest possible grade within the time given. I'm Jack from Achievers. Do give this video a thumbs up if you like it and subscribe to our channel and let's master higher level math together.